Hey, forgive me if this seems rushed. I just got back from a run. Pretty tired. So, my new script, Fear Itself. This will be a follow-up to um, The Hamley Disappearances and, to an extent, The Secret of Faust. Um, our main character is Luke Sandin. Um, you may remember uh, in The Hamley Disappearances, um, I had a character called um, Michael Sandin, who is a, a Curtis right there, and um, Luke is his brother. Now Luke is kind of anxiety ridden. Luke is our main character. He used to rely a lot on um, on Michael uh, for his anxiousness and getting through it and stuff. Um, but now that Michael's mysteriously disappeared, as have most of the citizens by Hamley, um, Luke arrives here by train, um, he gets off, heads off to, uh, Michael's place, um, discovers he's not there, but he gets greeted by, um, a familiar face. Now, he's acting pretty out of character. They've never met each other, but they do know each other by Michael, by acquaintance, because they talk about, um, Mary and Paul and the disappearances and... Everybody knows that. All my movies are connected. So anyway, they run into Colin Faust. Me. Me from The Secret of Faust. So Colin is all desperate and he's all like, you gotta help me find out what's happening with the cult. We are going down to the woods right now. They no security there. There are people there. We need to go help them. So Luke reluctantly agrees, just mainly so that there might be um, Michael down there. So they get to know each other a bit more. But little do they realize that the cult members are watching, including one hornbeak one. Luke begins to flee, and the cult members are doing grabbing motions, and uh, Luke just kind of blacks out. Um, Colin stands there, like kind of like, um, not even aware of them. He's blacked out. He has a weird dream about um, following the camera, like... Uh, Evil Dead style, like POV. We just see what the camera's looking. It's rushing towards, um, through the, through the woodlands, uh, against a screaming person. And Colin has directed that camera to the screaming person. It's not a real camera, but you know what I mean. POV. Uh, camera runs up to her, or him. I don't mind. And throughout this, we hear snarling and eerie drones. And whoop, Luke wakes up, and he is now like unconscious on the floor. Um, Colin says he's been out for a couple minutes and he's woken up with a weird um, box in his hand. It's got a felt interior, um, looks very gothic in design, um, and both of them aren't really sure how they got there, but um, Colin doesn't seem particularly interested. They bond with each other a bit as they decide that, you know, it's basically not a very good idea to go down here um, half cock just at once. Um, so they begin to walk back up, um, it's getting kind of late, so, um, Colin decides to hook, uh, Luke up with a place, probably Colin's place, an extra room, um, so that they can just kind of chill out and relax, and think of a proper plan. And, at this point, they bond with each other a bit more, Luke begins to feel a bit more at ease, like, at, at least, like, Though Michael may be gone, he at least has um, Colin to help, like, put him in check. So Colin basically says to him, like, well, maybe you found this box for a reason. Um, have you ever tried um, a real technique of, like, jotting down your anxieties on a piece of paper and putting them in the box so that they're shut down and that's, like, your worry box and it's put away and it's all good. So, um... Luke tries this with this new box, um, and he falls asleep. He has an even worse dream than when he was black out. Um, very Shining-esque, of um, going down a hall, or going up a hall, some kind of housing, intercut with him in the his face in the woods as he's reacting to it, and he's kind of um, worried, like building anticipation, building anticipation, and cut, 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 cut. And it goes onto a room, and inside we just see um, Colin asleep, fine, everything's alright. Um, we cut back to um, 
Luke, and he's relaxed. But then close up on his eye, as we hear, like, snarling, and um, his eye widens in shock, and he wakes up. It's all a dream. Phew. At this point, he gets kind of anxious. He heads down to check on Colin. We don't see it, but it's a mess. We only see a hand coming out of the uh, coming out of the room, and we see um, like a two shot with a hand out of the room. He's standing here, bloody hand, and Luke just kind of loses his shit. It's just so disturbing. And he just collapses to the floor. Suddenly, he hears a familiar voice. It's Michael Sandon, his brother. He hears an insect but buzzing panics frantic frantically. Michael basically taunts him that his little imagination is what's growing his fear right now, and he's right. He talks about how um, Clive Allen has made their family stronger, but that whatever is happening to Luke will make them even stronger if Luke joins their family. He talks about how imagination breeds fear, but surprisingly, Luke is able to calm himself, rely on himself, shut everything out, and just tell him that he's got to keep control. And it looks like he's going, it's going pretty fine. So Luke starts walking out of the room until he hears a whisper in his ear from Michael that, he, that he's failed him. Uh, at this point, Luke opens his eyes, sees the um, hand on the floor of Colin again, and bam, he's right back into that horrible, horrible place, and he blacks out, and he wakes up. What? It's as if the, uh, whole last part of the movie didn't happen. He's woken up in the bed, but we pan out. And there's no big deal about this, but the box is missing. So he's kind of visibly disturbed, of course, as you would be. Um, he opens the door, and he sees that Colin is just standing there ominously, like he's been here for a couple hours, standing there with the box in his hand. Colin informs him that it looks like he's just woken up from a nightmare. Colin talks about how if you focus on the negativity, then of course you're going to have a nightmare. Imagination will breed into reality. He talks about how fear, in that sense, the only thing you have to fear is fear itself. The idea of fear he says to Luke that he didn't see the fear, he didn't see the light of fear for quite some time until this man showed him, and some occultists come in behind him. We pan out from the house, possibly hear a scream, possibly keep it silent. I'm not too sure yet. We see back to the beginning. We see shots of Hamley deserted. End. So that's the story of fear itself, and I want to focus on themes of um, dependence and how it can ruin you, and on another person, I mean, and the idea of um, fear. Let it control you, it can become real. The mind makes the matter, almost. And how if you let fear pollute your imagination, the more stronger, the more stronger the negativity will become. So yeah, and that's how it ties in with uh, the Hamley um, saga so far. Right, thanks guys. I appreciate you checking out. And if you want to help out, just contact me. Um, thanks. Squaddle